Well, the doctor is in, and today's topic, we've been... Well, gosh, it's been in the news a lot now, and it's flesh-eating bacteria. Uh, it's been in the news for, I guess, a couple of weeks now, and you may have heard about that young Georgia woman who is fighting the infection. She's already lost her left foot, uh, part of her leg, her hands. It's something you should really be concerned about. And joining us today is Dr. Scott Ackerman, one of the First Coast leading doctors. He's with us every week here to discuss a variety of health topics. And this one, Dr. Ackerman, has really a lot of people talking and first of all, for those who might not know, what is flesh-eating bacteria? Well, thank you, Casey. It's, I'm glad you asked about that because I've had a lot of my patients ask me this week about it. A lot of my cancer patients are immunosuppressed, and so any kind there's, anytime there's an infectious disease going around, they're more in tune to it. And as you said, we heard in the news about this girl, Amy, in, in Georgia, and also a few other cases. There was a pregnant woman in South Carolina, another man in Milledgeville, Georgia, uh, who was weed whacking, um, who have, have contracted this. Um, and it's really not necessarily happening more often. This is one of those diseases that's not uh, mandated to be reported to the CDC. We're just hearing about it a little bit more lately. And it's called necrotosing fasciitis. So, so flesh-eating bacteria is really necrotosing fasciitis. It's a bacteria that's in the group A streptococcus family. That's the same family of bacteria that causes strep throat and those sort of things that, that aren't life-threatening but are serious. Uh, but there's some invasive strains of this streptococcus family of bacteria. And um, these invasive strains, when they get into the blood system and get into the bloodstream and deep in the tissues, they cause what we call necrotosing fasciitis. Now, flesh-eating bacteria is really a misnomer. These bacteria don't eat the flesh. These bacteria go into the tissues, deep into the flesh, into the muscle and soft tissue. And when they're in there and they're growing, they produce toxins. And these toxins cause damage to muscle. These toxins cause damage to other soft tissue, to blood vessels and those sort of things. Hence the term flesh eating. Um, if you, it, it's a really sneaky bacteria because mm -hmm. you don't really know you have it. If it's deep in your tissues, it may have a little bit of redness and irritation, but all of a sudden the, your arm or your leg will get black and pussy and maybe smell very foul smelling. So you want to look for these sort of things. You want to look for a, uh, if you have a, a, a cut that you got and, and were exposed uh, to possibly exposed to this bacteria and as the cut heals, if it's not healing right, if it's, if it's red, if you're getting a fever, if you're having any kind of flu-like symptoms, you want to see your physician. You want to be sure that you're not developing an infection that could uh, cause some permanent damage. So where do you find this bacter bacteria? Well, this bacteria is everywhere. It's on our skin right now. We have these type of bacteria. In fact, some people develop uh, necrotosing fasciitis after having a skin biopsy for something that's not uh, that not related to the infection. So that makes me want to be concerned. <laughs> yeah, well, you want to keep your, you want to what you want to be concerned about. The, this bacteria not only is on our skin normally, but also it's found strains of the streptococcus are found in lakes, brackish waters. Those are the, in, our, in, in your in your backyard. The problem is if you get an open wound, mm -hmm. and the bacteria gets into that open wound and it's not and 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 you don't treat yourself properly and keep it covered that's when you get the flesh eating disease okay so how do we prevent it especially going into memorial day weekend with people you know maybe in water and lakes and brackish water who knows right i i too i like to go outside i like to go swimming i like to be around the yard and rough you know rough house with my kids a little bit and so we all get cuts but we need to be careful of is if you get an open wound you want to be sure that you clean the wound out afterwards so see if it's a deep wound something superficial not so important, but this girl in, in Georgia, she was on a zip line and she uh, got a gash in her leg and it was a fairly deep gash. So you, if that happens, if you get an open wound, you want to clean it out. Friends of mine, I mean, my, myself included, we have, a, we have a first aid kit in the car. If you're out on the water, if you're fishing or out on the river or out in a lake, you want to have a, a first aid kit on board with you, which, which includes some antibiotic ointment, some fresh water to wash out the, or some sterile saline to wash out the wound. So you want to wash out the wound, put some antibiotic ointment, and keep it covered with a bandage. You know, sometimes you don't even think about it. You get a cut, and then you're like, ah, it'll just heal on its own, you know. But it, you, growing up, just as we were just we were talking about earlier, um, you know, when you you get a cut, your your parents will tell you, you know, let's let's take care of it, let's put all this stuff on it, the antibiotic, and that makes a world of difference. But let's say, for instance, somebody gets this, how is it then treated? So if you were to get the uh, necrotosing fasciitis, it is treatable. It's very uncommon. We hear about it in the news lately, but the truth is it's only about 750 cases a year. Of those, they, they can, it can be deadly. One in five is deadly. There is treatment for it. 
Treatment, uh, uh, first line treatment is antibiotics. Penicillins or those sort of drugs uh, can fight these bacteria if we identify what the bacteria, what the strain of the Streptococcus bacteria is. Um, if uh, uh, sometimes in more severe cases, we need to remove the tissues that are that are involved with the bacteria. And in Amy's case, and, uh, you, and you hear about in the news, people losing limbs, people yeah. losing an arm or a leg. And that's for two reasons. One, to remove the bacteria, but sometimes the bacteria releases toxins that plug the blood vessels. And that plugging of the blood vessels uh, causes necrosis and gangrene of the distal part of the extremity. Yeah. And so you need to remove that. We only have 30 seconds left, but there is good news here. There is some good news about uh, flesh-eating bacteria. The good news is it's preventable, the good news is treatable, and the good news is it's not that common. Okay, all right, thank you so much, Dr. Ackerman. We appreciate you being here and your insight for all of this and sponsoring the segment. Dr. Ackerman is with us every Friday. Next week, we're gonna be talking about prostate cancer screening. For questions regarding this topic or any other health questions, you can visit firstcoastoncology.com and confidentially submit your questions to Ask the Doctor.